Hey everyone, I'm here at the Planetary Processing Boot, who have very graciously sponsored the coverage of Develop Brighton. One thing that often indie developers say is like, oh, don't start with making an MMO as your like first indie game or as your dream game. You're never gonna make one. You're here with a solution of like making MMO games. Where did it go wrong? What's the elephant in the room? How are you solving basically the big problem? Yeah, so like um, uh, when I used to make indie games, um, I at one point like Googled how to make an MMO. And the internet basically said don't, so I didn't because I, I took the advice. After a couple of like false false starts, I, I sort of got like part way there, but like no, I, I took the advice in the end. I then went off to uni, did like computer science, and I, I ended up becoming like a distributed systems and computer networking engineer. And I was like, oh, actually, I, I kind of have the skills to to do that stuff, the stuff that the really hard tech stuff behind MMOs now. But like at that point, I was like, but how could I do this in a way that you know, rather than just building another version of the tech that, you know, Ubisoft and whatnot have all built a hundred times that Jagex has got in-house and whatnot, why not build like a version that's that's uh, reusable and sellable and, and something that, that can be like enabling indie studios to actually build it. And I know a few other people have done a lot, like similar stuff, but I feel like a lot of them have missed the mark by making it like kind of hostile to indies and not very easy to use and kind of expensive. So I sort of thought, well, make it as simple as possible, make multiplayer as as sort of without any net code anything like that do all the server side stuff and make it as as basic and straightforward as possible and, and work within like the engines that are commonly used um, and then sort of that's where we i guess like got with with planetary processing is it it's a very simple tool it's it's not got a lot of complexity from the user's perspective all of the hard stuff is done behind the scenes and trying to make it as accessible as possible because i i want to see I want to see indie MMOs because I really want. I wanted to make an MMO and I couldn't, and now I want to. I want to. I want other people to. No problem. So of course, then maybe that's you already said you wanted like simplicity because I think most of the people are like, oh, I want to make games, gonna make an MMO. Is there like some specific things that you're doing that are making it more accessible to like not have to do with the server instance thing that you may have to deal with? Like, what makes this more approachable, so to say, than the other approaches? Yeah. So um, like. Ours is firstly com completely self-service. Uh, there's no like consultation with our team, or whatever, saying that we are on hand to help. On like, I'm, I'm really active on the Discord and stuff like that. Join the Discord, by the way. It, it's very self-service. It's very straightforward to use. Um, so we have like a Lua scripting language that runs the backend stuff, and that's super simple. Like entity component model, basically, um, very similar to what you would get in like game objects in Unity. So exactly what you're used to. And then on the client side, then um, you literally just have an SDK, a plugin that you download for like Unity, Love2D, Godot, Default, and Unreal as well. Um, and it just syncs the state from the server-side simulation down to you and lets you send messages back up. And that's it. You don't have to deal with like sockets or anything like that. It literally moves the game objects around in like Unity or the or Unreal or whatever for you. Also provides you with the ability to like access all the state on the server side in your C sharp or your you know your blueprints or your your love to d whatever etc gd script and godot and stuff and it's like it's 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 super easy to use it doesn't use any net code you you don't have to deal with a socket at any point um, so like it's uh, yeah, I think it's pretty easy. Um, and as I say, it's completely self-service. You just sign up and go. It's free as well um, until you release your game. So like literally, nothing to lose. For the people who don't know, I'm sometimes called a fake developer. I I know a little bit about programming, but not that much. So one question here as well is when you talk about making an MMO, like the big thing, of course, is server infrastructure. But there's more that comes to it than that, right? It's yeah. things like accounts. Do you handle that stuff? Like what are all the things basically that you you take away because I feel like for beginning developers they often don't know what they need yeah. and then only once it's like too late they only find out oh I actually need account management and sign on and whatever yeah is that included in here as well all sorts of extra like things are included things like yeah auth and account management stuff is all like included as part of the the platform um, we also do like security stuff we do um, attack mitigation stuff so we, we're, we're very secure all your stuff's encrypted etc you know it's all it's all secure and, and designed to to be security first um, we handle all your storage and actually we don't even charge you if your game isn't active very much then the storage is just sort of free um, of, of your game state. We provide you with a bunch of like back-end APIs to help you like export state, import state, that sort of stuff. It's all sort of, yeah, there's a lot of extra things in there. And then on our roadmap as well, there's a bunch of other stuff that's like designed to, to make stuff easy going forward. Things that just, um, 
like auxiliary features that make it easier. So things like helping with content creation, because um, obviously everything is huge. And so when you say content creation, is it like making these kinds of videos oh, content? No, sorry, it's um, it's more of the user generated content and things yeah, like that, um, right? So one of the things nope. that um, that we're finding a lot um, is a lot of the games that we're seeing people build on our platform are very procedurally generation heavy and. Um, as such, like it, we've been starting to integrate some of those tools into just sort of make it easy again. You don't have to write your own simplex noise functions and stuff. So all that sort of stuff. We're just building in as much. We're adding a physics engine soon to be included in it, so it's like super easy to do all your physics stuff with just like a, a, a baked-in physics engine. So um, yeah, basically just all the auxiliary functions that that we can trying to make it a toolbox that's just like the MMO kit. And and if you just use the MMO kit, it should be that plus an indie game engine of your choice should just be enough, I guess, yeah. is, is the idea. And I, and I hope we're achieving it. I mean, I managed to get like a, a Unity game up and running in like 30 minutes. I mean, it looks a bit rubbish because I don't, I don't do art, but I've got it working. I've got a multiplayer game that scales to like tens of thousands of people working in like half an hour. There's not really much gameplay in it because it only took me half an hour, but there's, it, it, I definitely feel like we're onto something with a, a platform that really feels like it, it's, it's working and it's a quick win to make this sort of stuff possible, I guess. Are you planning to go back and try and recreate that MMO game of your dreams as well? Or you're focused a bit more just on the platform now? So at the moment, I'm pretty focused on the platform because uh, I'm, I'm sort of head of, you know, I, I mean, I, my job role says CEO, but I basically spend most of my time coding and like, you know, improving the platform. I really would like to get to a point where when the company is a bit more mature and I've got more people hired underneath me doing like the day to day operations, I'd like to be able to make that passion project that I wanted to make. Uh, it was a, like a big space, space exploration game, very sort of um, uh, inspired by a, a, a defunct project called Limit Theory um, that uh, I followed for years. And uh, so that, that was sort of my inspiration. I wanted to make that as like an MMO. I'd love to go back to it. I plan to go back to it when I can, uh, when when planetary processing is in a place where it's not a smaller team. We've got a bigger a bigger number of people working on it, I guess. So, outside of just oh, use planetary processing, do you have any other tips for people who are like, I want to get started making my own indie MMO game? Just in general, from your own experience, from talking to people who are using planetary processing, like maybe some more general indie MMO pitfalls almost. One of the things I'd say is um, we're at a point now where there's a lot of tools coming out that make this more doable. And whether or not you're using planetary processing, obviously I think you should be. <laughs> um, but like I, I would say don't be afraid to try because like I think that we're going to see more and more of this kind of, you know, indies breaking into this space and doing this kind of stuff over the next few years and, you know, Get in on that. Give it a go, especially with like low risk free trial tools like us and, and, and equivalents. It's not as scary as it looks anymore. Also, procedural generation is really useful for indie teams making massive worlds. Like, yeah. don't don't try and like craft a, a, a you know a elite dangerous size <laughs> uh, universe by yourself. That's uh, I think that's impossible. It makes sense. One final question, maybe. So I think you talked a little bit about roadmap. Like, so you're still very much at the earlier stages. What is like the next big thing right now that you're looking forward to? You've got the base implemented of like the MMO stuff. What is something that you are like now looking forward to in like the next few months? This is going to be a big improvement. So we've been going for two years. We've got to a point now where we've got a pretty stable, mature platform that we're, we're happy to, to share with people and, and get people on board. People are using it, building games on it. That's really cool. Next up, I think some of those most important auxiliary features, things like um, the physics stuff is really important to us. And also a couple of things to enable um, a couple of like slightly more advanced uses um, that people have been asking. For. I, I can't quite think of a term for what, what we're going to call it, but basically one thing loads of people have been asking us to do is like have like pocket dimensions inside your main world. So you can have like inside a cave or a dungeon or something like as a separate session um, and that's a feature we're adding and that's that's a that's a big one i haven't got a name for it yet so that's <laughs> that's that you can tell it's sort of still in the concept stage but that's a big one and then the physics i think stuff is is really important yeah. is there a limit to how big you can be as an indie could you go to like robert space industries from starsis and be like by the way guys you should use planetary processing or like what is the thing so it's very easy to get started what is like the maximum scale because our audience is not purely just beginning dreaming indies What's like the highest you've gone so far, basically? So the scale, it does scale really well to like tens of thousands of players concurrently in one persistent world, which is 
that's cool. But the the thing is, I think we're not really focusing on the big guys yet because I think we need to really prove ourselves with a couple of successful releases from from indies. And I also think I'm kind of indies are more important to to me personally. Like my the mission for me at Planche Processing has been to enable indies specifically. Um, I reckon down the line, you know, give it a few years um, when big company XYZ, soulless corporate entity, whatever, comes along and is like, hmm, we want to start a new MMO, but there's this tool out there. It may be the case that they go, hmm, the make or buy decision goes in our favor and we actually, you know, they they, they use us, but I'm not, like, that's not my 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 goal for financial processing. My goal is to be the enabler for indies, yeah. primarily. If you, Robert Space Industries, <laughs> are watching, then sign up now at planetaryprocessing.io or join our Discord at discord.gg slash planetaryprocessing. Yeah, if you're just a regular indie as well, I think that's a great place to get started if you want to dip your toes into, you know, maybe scratching, scratching that MMO itch and not face planting. I think planetary processing is a great solution to do for that. So thank you so much for your oh, time. Yeah. I hope so. Best of luck. And maybe, yeah, you guys head into the Discord. Don't bother me with tech support questions. He's here yeah. for you. Like he said, he's here for the indie, so he wants to hear what you are talking about as well. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very active on the Discord. Please join the Discord. Very happy to help, answer questions. Um, and if you want to talk to me directly, button on our website that says book a call, and that goes straight to me. So God help me after this. <laughs> um, but uh, cheers. Uh, thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.